Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is about flying cross country and I'll tell you friends it was my best flight ever in a low performance glider such as the PW5. I flew about 350 kilometers, that's about 217 miles and it took about five hours. Really an amazing day for me. What a challenge and how much fun it was. This is the PW5 and it makes an excellent cross country trainer. It has a 45 foot wingspan, weighs empty at about 400 pounds, and it's just a lot of fun to fly and we use it definitely for cross country training. Cruising speed for me is between say 50 and 75 knots. Stall speed is around 30-ish. I fly at TSA and the glider costs $21 an hour to fly. What a great deal, isn't it? This is the actual flight as recorded on OLC online contest. That's what we use to post our flights with. I started out at TSA heading west to Cleburne and then over to Stephenville and that's about 72 miles. From Stephenville I headed south to Hamilton, Texas and that was about uh, 60 miles. From Hamilton I turned northeast and headed to Hillsboro and that was about 60 miles. The final leg was from Hillsboro back to TSA and that's about 36 miles. I departed at 1 p.m. and landed at 6 p.m. So it was a five hour flight. Just a lot of fun and I'd like to share it with you. Let's get ready to go. On takeoff, you got to be very focused. You got to concentrate on watching the tow plane. If you ever lose sight of the tow plane, release immediately. We're going to hold it off the deck right here, just a few feet off the ground. Hold it off, hold it off. All right, he begins his uh, climb out. And why would he turn to the right after takeoff? And what it, the reason is it allows us to turn back to the runway in case we have a rope failure. Okay, coming up for tow release. There we go, we're gonna turn right to move away from the tow plane as soon as possible and he'll bank left. And I hooked it right into a thermal. That's, that's the way we like to do it if it's possible. Nice thermal, right off, right off tow. That's what we like. So at this point, I'm just working my way higher up before we start out. And I didn't really have a Pacific flight plan, anything like that. You just kind of go out there to the airport and look, talk to other people, look at some charts, things like that. And I decided to fly to Stephenville and that was about 72 miles and I had a tailwind and that helped, but it can also hurt you when you're trying to go back to TSA and you've got a headwind, but it turned out okay. I made it. Got to like that. Those cumulus clouds tell us where the lift is. You know, we fly on days where there's no clouds. We call it a blue day, and there are thermals there too. Real nice. We're not even going to thermal in it, but we're going to slow down in this lift and climb a little bit and keep on our present heading. So sometimes we don't circle in and lift, but we certainly will porpoise in it. We'll just simply slow down and take advantage of that rising air. If we get into sink or even heavy sink, we're going to put the nose down and try to get away from it as soon as possible. We don't want to fly in down air. If you notice that little red dot on my flight on the upper left hand corner, looks like I'm about halfway to Stephenville at this time. Just what a beautiful day. And this is August and we had a drought. And we still have a drought, even though we've had a lot of rain in the last week. And droughts are good for sailplane pilots but not good for farmers right <laughs> look at that here we go gotta love it all right just about to Stephenville and hooking up to a real nice thermal here climbing out you can hear that vario and those high beeps mean we're in a good thermal and the higher the tone and the faster it goes I said something like we're climbing out at 800 feet a minute there. Okay, we just passed Stephenville and we're headed south to Hamilton, which is about 60 miles. Look at that. Oh. So it's 
glider pilots love cumulus clouds because it can tell us where the lift is. Like I said before, we have days when it's blue and you don't have any clouds. So typically you've, it takes longer to, to go on across country, but when you have these clouds here that can tell us where the lift is, we just follow the clouds. We don't fly in blue areas. Blue areas can have sink. And I don't care what kind of glider you have. If, if you're in a blue area and you have sink, you ain't gonna stay aloft very long. All right, looks like I'm just about to Hamilton at this point. Look at the little red triangle. You'll see down right there near that point on the left hand side. When we fly on cross countries, typically we like to have the last leg be on the downwind, right? So it gives us a faster ground speed. You can't always do that, but that's kind of what we try to plan for. And on this flight, I couldn't do that. I had a, oh, a headwind uh, quarter to the quarter side and just had to deal with it. And of course, running out of daylight was another concern, but at the end of the day, I made it. And that was really a satisfying experience. And look at this thermal here, man. We'll just go right on up, kiss that cloud, yo. During the flight, my camera shut down. So on the landing sequence that I'm gonna provide for you was a previous flight because I just didn't have the data or the or the video available. So I certainly wanted to share this experience. But the very end is just another another day I flew in. Just to make the video complete, I put that in there because I didn't have anything else. Here we go, man. Look at that. Jeez. Take a look at this beautiful cumulus cloud. You think there's some lift under it? Oh yeah, there is. So we'll be coming up for the landing sequence. TSA traffic, PW5, go left down west for runway 18, TSA. All right, I made the announcement that I'm on a left downwind for runway 18 at TSA. At this point, I have full, dis full spoilers out, and the objective is to get to about 1,500 feet above sea level or about 900 feet above the ground. Very important to be scanning. I'm always looking over to the right to see if there's another glider coming in. And another thing I wanted to mention about the ground speed on GPS, it can show a lot faster than I'm actually flying. If you look at my altimeter, you'll see I'm doing between 50 and 60 knots on the approach. Okay, things are looking good. Turning on final, but I got a little aircraft down there, another glider on the end of the runway. So I'm going to definitely not fly over the top of him and land on the runway. So I've got the grass one ray made, no problemo. But now, once I passed him, I've still got a little room here. I'm going to ease on over and I'm flaring right now. I'm holding it off. Touchdown on that runway. Keep flying, keep flying, keep the wings level. The flight doesn't end until we're at a complete stop and off the runway as soon as possible. Yo, great flight. This video is the short version being approximately uh, nine minutes. I will have one out that's about 30 minutes long for those that want to watch it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure and look up all my other videos about things that fly from high performance gliders, sailplanes, model rocketry, radio control, NASA, and a lot more. So we'll see you in there next time. Bye-bye.